Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to discuss classification of Facebook. First of all, we have to define the term Facebook. According to Snow in 1802, it is a caliper like device which is used to record the relationship of maxilla and or mandible to the temporomandibular joints. Popular definition is by Glossary of Prosthodontic Terms, 9th edition. It is an instrument used to record the spatial relationship of maxillary arch to some anatomic reference point or points and then transfer this relationship to an articulator. It orients the dental cast in the same relationship to the opening axis of the articulator. Customarily, the anatomic references are Mandibular transverse horizontal axis and one other selected anterior reference point. This is the most popular definition. Coming to the classification, Facebook can be mainly classified into arbitrary and kinematic. And arbitrary is again classified into fascia type and earpiece type. Okay. So there are mainly two types, arbitrary and kinematic or hinge Facebook. What is arbitrary Facebook? It determines the approximate center of rotation of condyle and the kinematic Facebook establishes the center accurately. So that is the difference between arbitrary and kinematic Facebook. So coming to the first type that is arbitrary Facebook, it's the most commonly used Facebook in complete tension construction is arbitrary Facebook. Why it is said to be arbitrary? Because the hinge axis is approximately located in, the, in this type of Facebook. And what is it? It is also called as average axis Facebook. And this type generally locate the true hinge axis within a range of 5 mm. What is this one? In this picture, it shows Ritchie condylar marking. What is this? Actually, the condylar roads are positioned approximately 13 mm anterior to the auditory meatus on a line running from the outer canthus of eye to the top of the tragus. And this line is called canthotragal line. And this line is drawn or done using a marker known as Ritchie condylar marker. Okay. And this is not done for earpiece type Facebook where the earpiece is inserted into the external auditory meatus. So, actually this method generally locates the roads within 5 mm of true hinge axis of the jaws. Okay. As this is an arbitrary hinge axis, errors in jaw relation may produce occlusal discrepancies which should be corrected by minor occlusal adjustments during insertion. So that is about the arbitrary phase four. Okay. And under arbitrary phase four there are many types. Okay. So the main main types are fascia and earpiece type. Other types are Hanau Springbok, Slidomatic or Dinar, Geisy Facebook, Turl bow and whip mix. So these are the various types of arbitrary Facebook. Okay. So this is the fascia type of Facebook. Okay. This one. It utilizes the approximate points on the skin over temporomandibular region as posterior reference points. And these points are located by measuring from certain anatomic landmarks on the face. That is facial type. Okay. What is its disadvantage? As this face bow is placed on the skin which is movable, there is a tendency for condylar rods to displace. And also requires an assistant to hold the face bow in place. So the fascia type face bow. In this type, the condylar center, in this picture, it shows the condylar center 
is located 13 mm from the middle of triangle sound here on the cantho-triangle line. As we already seen the cantho-triangle line and its condylar center is located here. Okay, where is this? This is 13 mm from the middle of the triangle of here on this cantho-triangle line. And what does this picture shows? This is the placement of condylar rods at the marked point. Okay, already marked point. So here it is the marked point or the center of condyle. Here the condylar rods are placed at this point. What does this picture shows? Here the facebook is mounted by placing the condylar rods at the center of the condyle in the articulate. In this picture. Okay, center of condyle in the articulate. So, unlike the earpiece type, the facebook is mounted by placing the condylar rods at the center of the condyle in the articulate. So, this is the fascia type of facebook. Okay. Coming to the earpiece type. It uses external auditory meatus as an arbitrary reference point, which is aligned with ear pieces similar to those on a stethoscope. And here, the accurate relationship for most diagnostic and restorative procedures. And in this type, the posterior reference point is external auditory meatus and the anterior reference point is orbitae. Okay, and the ear pieces engage into the posterior reference points, that is, external auditory meatus. That is a, called as earpiece type of face. So, in this type, external auditory meatus is considered as the reference point to determine the center of condylar rotation. And the condyles are located at an approximate distance in the front of the meatus. Okay. Here the ear pieces are fit into the external auditory meatus which is located mostly to the center of contact. Okay. And in this picture it shows the ear piece which is which fits into the external auditory meatus is fitted in a slot behind the center of contact. Here it is the ear piece. This one is the ear piece of the face. Okay. And that fits into the External auditory meatus is fitted in a slot behind the center of contact. In the articulator, this is the center of the contact. Okay. Similar to its position on the patient. And this type of Facebook is easier to manipulate clinically. That example is the Hano Springboard. Okay. Hano Springboard is an example of earpiece type of Facebook or ear bow. Okay. What is its advantage? It is simple to use. Do not require any measurements on face as accurate as other face bows. And it provides an average anatomic dimension between external auditory meatus and the horizontal axis of mantle. And the disadvantage is that an error of 0.2 mm from the axis which can be expected when coupled with the use of thick intraocular record made at an increased vertical dimension. And this factor can lead to considerable inaccuracy. So coming to the Hanos Facebook, it's an earpiece type of Facebook made of spring steel and simply springs open and close to various heads. And it is the most commonly used Facebook. So this is the Spring bore and of Facebook. It is designed to orient the occlusal plane to Frankfurt horizontal plane by means for a third point of reference. Okay, so it is most commonly used and the arbitrary earpiece type, arbitrary fascia type and kinematic face bows are also available from Hano. And its main features are it's autoclavable, it is self-centering, much more comfortable to the patient and also the dentist and it is more rapid. Coming to the 
slidematic phase book. Actually, it is a type of earpiece phase book and it is used with dinar articulate. Okay. And it has an electronic device which gives reading denoting one half of the intercondylar distance. So, this one is the dinar reference plane locator. Okay. This is the dinar or a slidematic phase book. Okay. So, the posterior reference point for this instrument is that external auditory meatus and the anterior reference point is 43 mm superior to the incisal edge of the upper central incisor for dentulous patients. So, for dentulous patients, anterior reference point is 43 mm superior to the incisal edge of upper central incisor. Okay. And for the dentulous patient, the anterior reference point is 43 mm superior to the lower border of upper lip in a relaxed state. And this anterior reference point is also used for whip mix articulators. So, the, the anterior reference point can be marked using dinar reference plane locator. This one is that. Okay. This one is the dinar reference plane locator. And this plane locator is an instrument which resembles the face bow. So, it resembles the face bow. Okay. This one is the slidematic face bow. That is about the slidematic face bow. Coming to the Geisy face bow. Dr. Alfred Geisy constructed an instrument for registering the condylar path and used as face bow. Also. Okay. So, this is a Geisy face bow. It is proposed by or it is constructed by Dr. Alfred Gracie. Okay. Then 12 bow. It is also an earpiece type of face bow. It allows the maxillary arch to be transferred to the articulator without physically attaching the face bow to the articulator. It relates the maxillary arch to Frankfurt horizontal plane. And it is an arbitrary type of face bow. But it does not require any physical attachment to the articulator. And it is not commonly used for CD construction. Okay. A mounting gate is used to mount the transfer rod to the articulator. And it is easy to manipulate because the base bow is not needed to mount the maxillary cast in the articulator. Coming to the next type of base bow that is whip mix face bow. Here this picture shows the whip mix face bow. It is an earpiece type of face bow because the posterior reference point is external auditory meatus and the anterior reference point is nasion. So, here it is a it is a nasion related assembly. Okay. With the plastic nose piece is there. Okay. And it is it has the built in hinge axis locator. It automatically locates the hinge axis when the ear pieces are placed in the external auditory meatus. So, this is the whip mix type of face book. So, next one is the kinematic face bow. So, that is about the arbitrary type of face bows. Next, moving to the kinematic face bow or actual value of hinge axis. Okay. What is this one? Actually, this face bow is generally used for the fabrication of fixed partial dentures and full mouth rehabilitation. Okay. And it is not used for complete denture fabrication because it requires a long and complex procedure to record the orientation chocolation. So, that is the kinematic face bow. It is used to determine and locate the exact hinge axis position, positions or points. Okay. So, it is known as actual value face bow or hinge axis face bow or kinematic face bow. Okay. So, hinge axis of the mandible can be determined by a clutch. It is a segmented impression tray like device attached onto the mandibular teeth with a suitable rigid material such as impression plaster. So, in this picture, it shows the kinematic face bow. It allows the precise determination of patient's hinge axis. So, terminal hinge axis can be precisely determined by using kinematic face bow. So, it is a face bow with adjustable caliper ends used to locate the 
transverse horizontal axis of the mantle. It rotates through or excites the center of condylar rotation or transverse horizontal axis. Okay. It is preferred in full mouth constructions, reconstructions and it is usually requires a fully adjustable articulator. So here it is the kinematic phase work. Current pantographic traces are inbuilt with this kinematic phase work. Okay. So pantographic traces are inbuilt with this one. Okay. This is the kinematic phase work. So when we consider the rotation of any circular object, of only the central point rotates. So central point rotates, any other point within the circle will show translatory movement. So in this picture, it clearly shows when we consider the rotation of any, any circular object, only the central point rotates and any other point within the circle will show translatory movement. Similarly, in the condyle, the center alone will display pure rotation. And this principle used to determine the true center of rotation using kinematic fixed. So in this picture, here, tracing plate is there, tracer, then this is the bite fork, this is the mandibular occlusal ring. Okay. So in this picture, rotation of a circular object. Only the center rotates and other points translate. This one is the kinematic phase bow. Bite fork or clutches are attached to the mandible, which has the tracing stylus and the tracing plates fixed to the skull so that the tracers are in contact with the plates. So, here the tracing tracers are in contact with the plates. During the mandibular opening and closing, the stylus makes the tracing on the plates. Okay, that is about the kinematic phase bow. So, here the bite fork or clutches are there. It is attached with the mandible. Okay. And here there are tracing plates and also tracing stylus or tracers are there. That the tracers are in contact with the plates. And during the opening and closing of mandible, the stylus makes the tracing on the plates. Okay. So, the condylar rods are first positioned arbitrarily. Similar to the fascia type of face bow. At a point 13 mm anterior to the auditory meatus on the canthostriatal line. And the patient is instructed to make opening and closing movements in the centric relation position. The opening should not be greater than 12 mm as then the condyle will then begin to translate instead of rotating. And the position of condylar road is shifted around the arbitrary mark until it shows pure rotation. This is the center of condylar rotation. And this point is marked. The condylar rods are locked. Facebook assembly is removed and mounted on an appropriate articulate. And in this picture, it shows the true condylar rotation. Okay. That is the, the face bow. It helps to orient the cast in the patient's terminal hinge axis. What is a hinge axis? It is the Imaginary line around which the condyles can rotate without translation. Here the 12 to 15 degree pure rotational movement of joint is possible in this position. So terminal hinge position is the most retroded hinge position and it is learnable, repeatable and recordable. And the maximum incisal separation in this position is around 20 to 25 mm opening between the incisal edges. So, true hinge axis should be located and marked before using the face bow. Location of the hinge axis is then transferred to the articulator with the face bow. And this face bow requires a fully adjustable articulator to accept the true hinge axis. Since the patient's hinge axis is transferred to the articulator, the movement of the articulator will simulate the movements of the joint made at terminal hinge position. So that is all about the classification of Facebook. That's all for today's lecture. Please do like, share and subscribe my channel for more videos. Thanks for watching.